So this is the compass that I've made for Niels, for Miele's Fountain. Miele's Fountain, I wonder how you're supposed to say it. So this is the compass for the film and it's made using silver and brass. The brass is actually a form of brass known as gilding metal. So I'll just bring it in a bit closer for you to see. The, the lid is kind of textured in 3D. You've got the swirls and the star and the moon. Everything you can feel. Um, I'll just give you a tour of the exterior as well. So there you have the hinge closure for the lid and the ring that the chain attaches to. And here we have the clasp that you push in to open that lid. It's quite a weighty piece. You can see the size of it in my hand. It's quite big. So just push that in. Open it up, and there you have. Oops. There you have the interior with the needle. And I hope you can see this without too much reflection. But if you tilt the compass, you can get the needle to move. So it looks as if it's seeking north, but in fact it's simply rotating on a fine point inside. You can open it. Ah, uh, well that's a bit better, I think you might be able to see the needle moving more easily there. So for the filming I know you need to be able to take the glass out, so what we have is a, a framework that's holding the glass in based on the idea of a bayonet fitting, so you need to, using the little silver doubles there, just twist it a little bit to loosen it off. And then I use a little cocktail stick it's wooden and it's not going to scratch anything or break anything and just pop it under there to lift that out and there are hey presto the, the bayonet fitting is removed whilst I'm here the the bayonet fitting has a little a little dink in it just here can you see that um that is a little mark to show you that this bit that bit with the dink needs to be placed near the hinge when you put it back for that that's the best fitting if you put it near the if you put it the other way near to the clasp it doesn't fit so well so the little dink needs to go towards the hinge okay to take the glass out put your fingers on there on the glass and turn it over without losing contact with the glass there is only one piece of glass and these are hard to come by. They take hours to cut. So we cut that on one side, and then we have the needle here, which is a really pretty design, I think. And for the needle to move freely, I've been using a little tiny bit of oil. I put a bit of oil on this, the actual point of the needle, um, a cutting oil or a three-in-one, and then put it back into the just little housing for it, the little hole, and then it moves really freely. As I said before, it moves, it's weighted, so you just need to tilt the compass a little, and there it goes. Taking a closer look inside, you can see we have north, east, south, west letters, and they are uh, ming mingled in with the symbols around making it completely unique. So to put the glass back in, be careful with it please. <laughs> Just pop it in, take the bayonet fitting once more, make sure that the dink is towards the hinge, and then using again the little silver ball, just give that a little twist in the anti-clockwise direction, but you don't need to go very far don't make it too tight and then it's all back together and close the lid again nice clunk and there you go there it is I hope you like it I have polished it it's not been finished with a sealant or a varnish or anything so it will tarnish it will age 
um, and I have a little tiny box that I made to try out using the metal and you can see just how much it has tarnished. You can compare the two, one is nice and shiny and the other is quite matte and aged and that is what will happen to this one uh, if you don't keep it polished, it, just, it will naturally oxidise. Okay, that's it from me.